Hey everybody, so today we're going to be talking about uh, a problem that we've actually been seeing quite a bit here. It's been getting a little bit more uh, prevalent that we've seen it more times and more times as we go along. It is the Big Sur update. When you try to install it, it keeps going in a loop. So we want to just try to figure out what's going on with that today. Um, we actually have a special case for this one in particular today, and it's pertaining to the data on this one. So this model in particular is the A1708. Um, it does have a removable hard drive, so that always could be part of the problem here. But let's show you exactly what we're kind of talking about here. All right, so this is the error that we actually got and that the customer received. It just keeps looping to this error. So we're just going to go test it real quick to make sure that is the actual issue. So we're going to just reboot it and try the same thing again. We'll wait for it to load and then it should go into minutes because it's, it's doing the installer all over again. So if you do this, it looks like this is probably the same exact thing the customer had. So we're going to be loading and then it should give us a time here because it's trying to complete the install. So we do see that and that's what the client was talking about. So once it's all done, it's going to show you this little error page that the download could not be completed. Um, and then it's going to loop you back to where we started here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start it up again. We're going to be doing the internet recovery. You can hold command R for this part. It's going to hit you into the internet recovery for this partition here. Just going to be checking to see uh, if the hard drive is there and if there's any issues with it. So now we're going to go to disk utility. And in disk utility, we can see everything here. We can see the data partition of the Mac OS and we can see all the other partitions there. Sometimes I like to do this so you can see all and you want to see the main hard drive there and you can also see the Macintosh data one and then that's kind of what we're kind of looking forward to here. And if you don't care about the data, you can actually go to where it says Apple SSD and just go wipe that one there at the top. And then once you wipe it, you can just install the OS um, from the reinstall from the recovery. If you do care about the, the data, you definitely want to stay tuned for the rest of the video here because I want to show you the steps I took to recovering the data for this one. I'm trying right now. I have a Mac OS Catalina bootable. I'm just booting it from a USB drive. I'm plugging it in. And I've noticed that there's only two partitions I can actually access here. And it just says, you can see on the side there, it says update. And this is, looks like it's, it was the partition that was trying to update. And then you just see the regular Macintosh system data here, which doesn't have anything else. Um, so let's go check disk utility real quick and we can see that the Macintosh HD data is still there But we can't see it on this partition for some strange reason It does see it in disk utility which means it's there But something is blocking it so at least the Catalina boot that I have can't see it So it's something that's pretty strange there and I even look for the disk here and I see all the disks And I still don't see the main uh, HD partition that's supposed to be there for your the data on the newer Mac OS's, they do put a separate partition, and that should be even for Catalina as well. Catalina usually separates the two partitions there. So we try to hit disk repair there, and it's just giving us an error that tells us to back up the data. And of course, we can't do that because for some reason, it's not letting us really even touch it. So I'm just trying to do a bunch of first aids and everything here and seeing if anything does happen. And again, if you don't really care too much at this point, you can just do uh, the install through the actual internet recovery. You can just wipe the partition and um, just kind of go from there. But if you're really interested in the data, which we really are in this case because the client's information is really important, we actually found something that was really interesting. Because if you noticed before, when we tried to boot to the internet recovery, it showed that it was a Big Sur recovery. Big Sur recovery usually is a part of a, a firmware update from Apple knowing that you're updating to Big Sur. So now what we're going to actually do is we're going to show you, it's, this is from a previous video, but we've done this before. It's actually to remove the actual hard drive itself. So let me show you guys here real quick. Once we move the hard drive, um, now we actually did notice something else that actually happened here. The firmware is actually more tied towards the hard drive, and we're going to show you what we're talking about right here. Once I remove the drive, I want to hold Command R when I boot it up for the first time. It's going to take a little bit of time, and of course you put in your credentials there, and you can see here this is a totally different looking 
recovery partition. And that's because this one actually has a Mac OS Sierra recovery partition and it didn't actually have the Mac OS Big Sur partition. So this is a totally different thing. And it looks like that the hard drive has a different recovery partition than the actual firmware on the board itself. As you can see that once we move the hard drive, you can actually see that it has Mac OS High Sierra as the main firmware that's on the board itself. And that's after we remove the hard drive. Now what we were thinking is since it says it's since it actually has Mac OS High Sierra, why don't we just try a bootable Mac OS High Sierra and see if that works after we plug in the hard drive back in and um, it should boot from there. And um, if you guys don't actually have a bootable, what you can do in this particular case is you can make a bootable by going to the recovery partition there and just plugging in a USB. And when you try to install without the hard drive installed there, you can install the actual uh, Mac OS High Sierra because that has a partition there. You can install it directly to a USB. And you just need to format it to the Mac OS journals and then it should take care of itself. But in this one, we're actually gonna go see if it, the bootable actually does work here. So we plug back in our hard drive and we actually plug back in a bootable um, High Sierra that we did have and we can actually see that there's all the partitions that we find here. If you guys don't have a bootable, you can always make one by installing it through the Mac OS recovery. You can just plug in a USB and target it to install there. So this will help you out a lot better. So now we can see the partitions here. And we can actually go to the folder here with the main folder and we couldn't do that before on the Catalina bootable. So we can actually see the user folder and we can see all the data. Now we can go back everything up. So we actually did learn something here. Um, usually when you do upgrade to Mac OS Big Sur, it updates the firmware. And especially on any of the other boards though, if you're trying to get the data off, most of the newer Macs have a non-removable hard drive. The only way to get past the firmware is to have another Mac OS Big Sur bootable. I was actually unable to make a Mac OS Big Sur bootable by, by the method I was just talking about. Um, when you go to the internet recovery and plugging in a USB, I wasn't never able to actually get the bootable to work. It for some reason just always kept not installing for some reason. I tried multiple different machines and it just wasn't let me doing it. I need to look, research a little bit further to kind of see what the problem is for that. Or if you do have the answer, please leave a comment down below because I'm really curious why I can't make an OS on, um, I can't install an OS on a bootable USB having Big Sur on it. For some reason, I just can't do that. I assume if you actually have that and you have Big Sur that's installed on your actual machine and you're having the same issue and you're able to boot to that drive, I'm sure you're able to see the drive and just boot to the main bootable there and then get the data off from the bootable drive to see from the main hard drive. So in that method, that should still work in the same type of way, but we can't be completely sure because we haven't actually tried it ourselves yet. Until I get that bootable, man, I, I just don't know. So in this particular case, though, it's very interesting how this OS problem actually kind of worked itself out. So it does look like that the firmware is part of the actual hard drive itself. And if you remove it, you get the one that's supposed to be on the board. From what I understood, I thought the, when you upgrade to Big Sur, it's supposed to flash it, not just on the hard drive, but also on the board itself. But it looks like that's that's completely wrong because the recovery partition is still different on the hard drive than it actually is on the board. So on the newer boards, it's going to be giving you always that Mac OS Big Sur partition that's just going to stay there forever because that's what it upgraded to. And that's where it's going to stay at because the hard drive is part of the board. So I assume that part's going to stay the same. But for the other ones, and maybe even in the older MacBooks, they probably have the same type of solution as if you just remove the hard drive, it's going to actually be on um, the older partition. That it, Unless you update the firmware completely um, and you have a main firmware update. But um, that kind of looks like it's it. So it was really interesting on how to do that. If you guys can explain the reason why I'm not able to make a Big Sur OS actually go on a USB. Please let me know why down below. Please leave a like for this video if you found this video informative. Um, please let us know any other feedback that you think we should be doing for other videos. We love doing li liquid spill repairs, Mac, just talking points and stuff like that. And just anything that we kind of find, I just kind of like to put this out to you guys. So, um, again, you guys have really been supportive. All likes help. Um, hit the notification bell to get the subscriptions that actually come out when they're supposed to come out. Because sometimes Google doesn't put them out at the right time. But um, you guys have been so great. And uh, we really enjoy having you guys. And I hope you have a good one. Bye.